Hey guys, quick update from Iceland. So isn't it crazy? While we're having hot lava spewing out from the earth, a volcanic eruption, there's ice dams building in some areas in Iceland in rivers. That's why the Icelandic Meteorological Office has given out a warning that dangerous ice dams have been forming in rivers in many parts of the country and that can lead to temporary flooding and of course this can break off at any time so stay away from the rivers but of course also stay away from that eruption that is still ongoing with little to no changes basically over the weekend. It's still erupting from that one crater the lava is still flowing it's not flowing super fast it's flowing to the southeast mainly south is never so good because Grindavik is south but so far there's absolutely no advance getting close to Svartsengi or anything but one thing that is definitely happening and that is the gas pollution and depending how the wind changes it has reached really dangerous levels so it's been in Husafell the other day and now it's really into Swartzangi and also into Grindavik so they have given out warning that really the gas pollution exceeds the healthy limits that it can get really toxic so people be aware monitor the warnings that the Met Office gives out the daily gas pollution forecasts and the maps so watch those because there are people in Grindavik between 40 to 50 homes always occupied overnight and then of course the fish processing plants that are going on with about a hundred workers in one plant that are really working there every work day so that is definitely a concern and wind can change quickly that is also a concern should the blue lagoon open right while well, this is going it can change quickly and then you're swimming into a pond in that ponds there you can't get out very quickly and get away from this so same thing if you're outside in Grindavik be aware so since we have only that one northern crater left from the whole eruption. So first it used to be a fissure, then it was slowing down, then there was a middle crater, a southern crater, and a northern crater, and now it's only the northern crater. And they said the crater, it's kind of like pulsating the lava out since it's been isolated to just only that crater and they say this is absolutely normal this is typical behavior if there is only one crater left in an eruption and he says we've seen this before in previous eruptions in this area and there are no specific signs right now and that is interesting that this de eruption is decreasing but also there's no indication that it's increasing so since it's already been the second largest eruption you know with every day that this thing keeps going on it has a high potential to become the biggest eruption since everything began on November 10th last year so it's over a year now that the Reykjanes Peninsula has to deal with this volcanic activity the volcanic peninsula did reawake from an 800 year dormancy so nobody alive has ever experienced the Reykjanes peninsula when the volcanic activity is active when the volcanoes are actually erupting this has started with Fagradalsfjall in 2021 but now this is close to infrastructure and that's why they're saying one maximum two more eruptions in a bad spot that would send lava to Svartsengi and or Grindavik we might not be able to protect it and we've seen this with this eruption how fast it was flowing towards the defense wall and this time around the blue lagoon so should there be more lava flow next time carpet lava carpets get higher it can flow over the defense walls very very quickly and i was very happy that these heroes that are actually building these defense walls that are working on these defenses for over a year they have been working on it that they have been featured in the icelandic newspaper mbl because i really think they're heroes and we all remember the first eruptions they had their machinery standing there and then the lava was coming towards their machineries and they still kept going and they went in there and they were driving one after the other machine out to save them so they're really cool guys and they're right where the 
reaction is if the lava is threatening one defense while they're going right up there and increase it while the lava is th threatening at it. So that's why um, I'm quite of excited that there's more people featured now today in the MBL newspaper that we can even put more faces to people that work there. And if you look at this picture, the guy's Arman John Gardarsson, and he has supervised the construction of these defense walls in Grindavik and in Swartzengi. And, you know, in this interview, he basically says, you know, that he's just for fun, has started counting how many calls he's made in one day. And he said it was 115 calls. And, you know, as a project man manager, together with other companies that take care of this, these sort of defense walls around Swartzengi and Grindavik. So he says, you know, there's always something changing. And that's why you have to be in touch with everyone else so they're busy bees they're like the fraggle rock that's what i'm always saying and he describes it you know originally the plan was to build like seven kilometers off the fence walls around grindavik and swartzengi but then the volcano kept coming coming at them so they realized quickly oh my gosh we have to do more um but now they have like double the amount of defense walls they have like 14 kilometers off defense walls and you have to also understand they made them even higher than they originally thought because the lava carpets were getting higher from eruption to eruption the lava was building on top of each other so not only have they more in length they have even more in height than they previously thought and they said like unprecedented material transfers have taken place he says almost three million cubic meters of material have been transported to these defense walls at the moment it was easier in Swartzengi because material was there they could push it together but Grindavik that was a different story they had to truck a lot of material to build these defense walls there so it was even more effort and he's giving that comparison again when they built another infrastructure where they had five years time to build this so they were moving 7.5 million cubic meters um, but it took them five years now they have done this in a year so they were working non-stop and also they needed to create roads of course through these existing rough fields from old time lava fields it's rough it's not easy to drive so they had to build roads to even be able to build this then they had to rebuild roads because roads like Grindavikovigo were destroyed by lava so they have built about 30 kilometers of roads this is really a lot you know if you have to drive with the car 30 kilometers through the countryside you're driving 45 minutes probably basically what he says how these workers feel they're in the rescue team this is what it is rescue Grindavik rescue the Swartzengi power plant and the Blue Lagoon and it feels like you know you're a first responder you're on call all the time but the call is just a little bit longer than other usual calls this has been lasting for over a year like for almost 13 months right now you know, we've seen seven eruptions in the Sutnuka crater series since November 10. And he says, you know, the employees that have been on duty over the past year, they do not see themselves as heroes. But I have to say, I do. I absolutely see them as heroes. And that's why Arman, he wants to say that these people are very hardworking and they're selfless how selfless they have been throughout the whole year. He says the people wake up at half past six in the morning and then they come to work at the defense walls and they say they always come with a good morale. They're never like angry or anything. He says, well, there have been some crazy people working here, but there was never a problem with the people. He says, and the men who drive these big dozers, he says, they get one lunch break a day. That's it. And then they keep going. They keep pushing. They keep going. But with so many eruptions, they have, they have always been fighting against the clock because they knew we have to hurry up. And you see a picture here of them in, in their office building where they have a meeting. Um, so yeah, great guys. I absolutely love them. And he says that these 
Fraggle Rock workers, these heroes, they're not even thinking about the fact that they're basically doing national protection work or national cleanup work. All they're doing is they doing their work. They don't have time to really think about it. He says, you know, we have to think about every day what we have to do. And maybe people will have time to think about this later. Hopefully there will be a later because the Reykjanes Peninsula could remain active for centuries, even even you know, for decades, even centuries. And that's what scientists are predicting. It could last 100, 200, even 300 years. And what he also outlines, you know, at the peak, when, when there was the most threat level, they were always working on, and still are, working on 24-hour shifts on all different kinds of machines. And they had, like, at the same time, 50 people, always 50 people around the clock, 24 hours. So 25 people on the day shift, 25 people on the night shift. And he says the work has been done like this for about eight, nine months. I mean, think about this. This is crazy. Um, so almost the whole year. And then they're saying, well, it, you know, it would be nice to sometime um, get a little holiday. And he says, because nobody has taken a single day off since the last eruption started. And uh so <laughs> uh, the reporter asked them, well, shouldn't you go to Tenerife or something like this after this? Uh, and uh, they were laughing and they said, yeah, we would do that. But, you know, if you follow my channel, you might have probably seen that I have released um, a video about the Tide volcano on Tenerife and there have been 500 earthquakes there has been a swarm of earthquakes underneath this volcano so we do not want to send these fraggle rock heroes to Tenerife and then there's a volcanic eruption <laughs> because you know they need some free time some time off of volcanic eruptions and natural disasters so they better find a really really safe place for these guys. And of course, they have to be careful too if there's gas pollution, right? They they are right at the center and they are right where the glowing and steaming lava is. That is, that is basically getting out uh, volcanic gases and ashes. So they always have to be super, super careful. And we know what happened once with one worker, one employee at the Blue Lagoon. He was out in a tractor doing some work and then the wind changed during an eruption and he had to be hospitalized with serious breathing problems. Thankfully, he later was fine. But, you know, as you see here in this article that MBL has released about the gas pollution, I mean, you see the black lava carpets, how they are around everything. And you can also see these defense walls. And there you also see, had they not built these defense walls and had they not increased the defense walls, Grindavik would be gone by now. Because you see that one square lava carpet that is inside the defense walls that was when it was breached and also a fissure opened more to the south you feel like it's like a black scar that goes right into Grindavik of course the defense wall doesn't help there there have been proposals for the suburbs of Reykjavik actually because the Krizovic system has sent lava flow there so Thorvald or Thorvaldsen has said well we should consider doing something like like fences that can withstand some lava flows around your garden around your house or something like this should there ever be a problem I mean they have always warned let's start building fences in other places because it seems the whole Reykjanes Peninsula might wake up we could see simultaneous eruptions there's always been in the Bluffield ski area and the Krizovic system System. It's been rumbling. We just had the other day at Askia, it's been rumbling, Barda Bunga. But you know, the airport, Reykjanes Braut, and Reykjavik, the suburbs where there has been in the past, before our time, lava flows, they have to think about something. Also, think about protecting other. Um, critical infrastructure so they're going to be busy for the next years I'm pretty pretty sure so this was my update guys I hope I like you liked it I have released another update about why am I in an RV about Apollo's radiation treatment um, this is a series I do for my viewers that are interested in my private life so to speak what's going on with my doggy that has a 
two more at his upper palatal and that's growing in his nose and the only chance he has is a radiation therapy and that's why I am traveling and if you want to know why check out my playlist like a retravel why I am in an RV trying to save my dog and thank you guys for all your support you're really really awesome and uh, if you want to support the channel or I have to say at the moment it's all going for Apollo because that treatment is horrendous go to a, my buymeacoffee.com website buy a coffee for Apollo um, that really really helps Helps because the, the difference to that side for like supers here in YouTube is that side um, pays out once a week and I have to make these payments starting today and uh, I will see how much it is they it can range now they said he does not only need 10 treatments he needs 15 so it's going to be close to 10,000 US dollars so that's of course something you don't have in your drawer so if you want to do that Thanks so much, guys. You've been absolutely awesome, but also your emotional support and just being here, supporting this channel, supporting my animals. You're absolutely great. And my heart goes out to all of you. You've told me your stories. You've lost animals. It's just life is cruel. It's the loss. I don't know. I guess it's the price of love, but it's it's just terrible. So my heart goes out to you guys and I hope to see you soon. There's some videos here in the end screen for you. And also check out my membership videos. If that's of interest to you, become a member. Join our intimate group where we can share more private stuff. I see you there, hopefully. Bye bye.